Hey there, in this video, we're going to talk about slope intercept form and how we actually graph in slope intercept form. So remember slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. And then um, we will also talk about how we take an equation that's not in standard um, or not in slope intercept form, typically in something we call standard form and change it into slope intercept form and then graph from there. So just a quick reminder, of linear functions. So as a reminder, linear functions create infinite straight lines when they are graphed. We've talked about um, briefly quadratic functions and those make a U shape that are called a parabola. But in this unit, we're gonna focus only on graphing linear functions. So there are three different formats that we're gonna look at for graphing linear functions. Today, we're going to start with this one with Y equals MX plus B. And then we will get into point slope form in a future video which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And then we'll uh, talk about picking two points to graph because you only need two points to actually technically be able to graph a line. So when we graph in slope intercept form, remember that m represents the slope and that tells us how steep the line is and what direction it goes, if it's positive slope or negative slope or a slope of zero. B, remember, is your y-intercept. So 0 comma B is that y-intercept, and that is the point where the graph crosses the y-axis. So let's take a look at some steps to graph in slope-intercept form. So first, you want to make sure that y is by itself. We want it to be in slope-intercept form if it's not already there. These first two are already in that format. Remember, f of x really just means y equals, so if it helps you to rewrite that, you can. So y equals mx plus b is step one, get it in that format. Step two is to figure out the m and the b, and you're going to start at zero comma b. So you're gonna start at your y-intercept, and then you're going to use the slope to plot at least one other point. Now, for time's sake, technically you only need one other point to be able to connect those points and draw the line, and that's what you'll do. You'll plot at least one other point besides that y-intercept, connect them, and put arrows on the end. So let's take a look at example one. We're going to graph this equation using the given graph. So our m is going to be negative one half because that's the number being multiplied by x and our b is two. So remember b tells us our y-intercept and m tells us our slope. So to start, you are always going to start with that b value. So you're going to go to the y-axis because that's your y-intercept. You're going to go up two, put a point, and that is your y-axis or I'm sorry, your y-intercept, which is on the y-axis. Now your slope is negative one half in this case. Remember slope is always rise over run. So just like when we are given a line and we figure out the slope, we count the rise and the run. You're going to do the same thing here, but we are going to use the slope to plot another point. So we're going to take negative one over two. Our rise is negative one and our run is positive two. So from this point that we just plotted on the y-axis, we are going to go negative one for the rise. Negative means we go down. So that's gonna be negative one for the rise. And then we run two, which is your horizontal. And it is positive two, so we go to the right. That's going to be your second point on this line. Technically, you could right now plot those uh, two points, connect them and draw your line. Now, depending on what the question is or the problem is, um, that may be enough to help you answer the question. It may not. So just to make a note in case you need more points, maybe you need to find where it crosses the y or the x-axis um, or something along those lines. You can continue with that rise over that run. So negative one, we go down one, we go right two, we put a point. We go down one, we go right two, we put a point. So you can technically keep going until you run out of space on this graph. Obviously it goes on forever, so you would put an arrow on the end to indicate that. Now to go the opposite direction, if for some reason I needed to go that way, we would do the opposite. So instead of going down one and right two, we would go up one and left two. And that's going to continue that line to the left and up. So up one, left two, up one, left two, and then I run out of space. So there is my line that goes through all of my points. So again, um, that is 
just an extended way to do it to get all of your points on the line um, within this region that we see graphed on paper. Now, obviously, you may not need all of those points. Technically, you only need two points on the line to create the line. So really, we could have stopped after those first two, but I just want to make sure you knew how to do it um, either way. So let's look at number two y equals 3x minus 1. So with this one, um, we have m, which is 3, the number being multiplied by the x. And then we have b, which is negative 1, that constant after the 3x. So remember, our m is our slope, and our b is our y-intercept. So we're going to start by plotting that y-intercept on the y-axis. So negative 1 on the y-axis is this point right here. We go down 1 because it's negative. And then our slope is a little bit different. It is a whole number. So when you think about a whole number, you don't think about a fraction typically for rise over run, but it can be written as a fraction. A whole number can always be written over one. So our rise is three and our run is one. They are both positive. So that means from this point we just plotted, we're going to go up one, two, three for our rise. And then we go right one for our run. And that is your point um, on your line. That's your next point. So again, technically I could right now connect those and create a line. That would be correct. That would be accurate. Just to make sure that you understand, um, the points do go on forever. So you could continue if you needed to going up one, two, three to the right one. And then if I kept going, I'd run out of room that way. But that would be um, following your up three, right one. Now, if you want to go the other direction, we would go the opposite. So both directions would be opposite. So instead of going up and right, we would go down three and left one to put a point right here. Down three, left one, put a point right here. So again, um, those additional points are not necessarily necessary, but they can come in handy depending on what the question is asking. So just something to keep in mind that you don't need to continue graphing if it's not necessarily necessary for the problem, but uh, the line does go on forever. Now let's talk if we have a um, equation that is not in standard form. Um, I'm sorry, it's not in slope intercept form. Um, not in that y equals mx plus b, it will often be in what we call standard form, which is this form right here, where we have x and y on one side and then the constant on the other side. So with that, we've talked about how we get it into slope intercept form. We start by getting the y term by itself. So we'll subtract 2x from both sides. When we subtract 2x from both sides, we get 4y equals negative 2x minus 8. Then we divide both sides by 4. Every single term gets divided by 4. 4y four divided by 4 is just y. Negative 2 divided by 4 is negative 1 half. So we have negative 1 half x. And then negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2. So that tells us that m is negative 1 half and b is negative 2. So our slope is negative 1 half. And again, that is our rise over our run. And then our B is our Y intercept. And that's what we're going to start with in the graph. So key thing is to get Y by itself first to get that slope intercept form. And then once we have that slope intercept form, we graph it just like we did the previous examples. So negative two is our Y intercept. And then we go down one because it's negative one for our rise and then run of positive two. So down one and then right two and then put a point. And again, technically, that is enough to create our line. But if you need to um, do additional points, you can. And to do those additional points, we just keep going from that point. We go down one, right two, put a point. Down one, right two, put a point. So that's that portion of the line that continues. And then we can go the other direction. Instead of going down and right, we would go up one and left two and put a point up one, left two, up one, left two, so on and so on. And that will continue the line in the opposite direction. So in summary, we talked about how there 
are three ways to graph. In this video, we just focused on slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. And if it wasn't in slope-intercept form, we got it in the slope-intercept form. And then we use the m and the b to plot our b first, our y-intercept. And then we use our slope, our rise, and our run to plot at least one other point, connect those points, and create your line.